Hi everyone, in this lesson we want to look at how we rationalize the denominator of some expressions and in particular where the denominator is a cube root. Okay, so we've already looked at uh, uh, how to rationalize denominators that are square roots. How is that going to be different if uh, we have a cube root or maybe a higher powered root? Well the idea here <clears throat> is that uh, if I look here, in the past for square roots, 9 would be a perfect square, but notice 9 is not a perfect cube. So what I want to do is think of this as the cube root of 2 over 3 squared. Now, in order to get a perfect cube, I need 3 3's in the denominator, not just 2 of them. Uh, 27 is a perfect cube, but 9 isn't. So if I want to uh, uh, get rid of the radical in the denominator here, I'm going to multiply inside this radical by 3 over 3, and that would give me the cube root of 6 in the numerator, and then I'd have the cube root of 3 cubed in the denominator, and this cube root will then undo the cube, and I'll get my answer that I want, the cube root of 6 over 3, and that would give me the answer that I'm looking for, the simplified form that that is rationalized. I no longer have a, a, a radical irrational number in the denominator, in this case the cube root of 9, I've changed into 3. So I could do a similar thing over here. Notice here I have two separate radicals. Now I could put these together as, a, as under the same uh, um, radical like we had in the first one, or I could just think to myself, well what would I need to multiply by here in order to make this denominator be a perfect cube. Well, I don't want to multiply by 4 squared, because 4 is really 2 squared. Um, let's multiply instead. Let's think of this as being <clears throat> the cube root of 7x over the cube root of 2 squared times y. So in order to make that denominator be a perfect cube, all I need is another 2. So if I multiply by the cube root of 2, that would give me the cube root of 2 cubed, and then, then I can take the cube root of that. And then I'll also need a y squared inside that cube root. So notice when I'm operating outside of the radical, as opposed to this one where I worked inside the radical, I just multiply by the cube root, the same index that I have here. So I'm going to multiply by the cube root of 2y squared over the cube root of 2y squared. And again, the reason I'm doing that is so that I can get the cube root of 2 cubed and the cube root of y cubed. So in the numerator, that's going to give me the cube root. I'll have 7 times 2, that's 14 and I'll have an x times a y squared. And notice there's no perfect cubes in that numerator, so that's going to be, I'm not going to be able to simplify that anymore. In the denominator, I'll get the cube root of 2 cubed times y cubed, and then I can simplify that denominator. So here's my final answer, the cube root of 14xy squared divided by the cube root of 2 cubed is 2, the cube root of y cubed is just y. Okay? Alright, so let's do another example like that. If I had the cube root of 5 over AB squared, in this case, I could just uh, think to myself, well, if I, I already have an a to the first power, if I want to take the cube root um, and have it simplify and get rid of the cube root in the denominator, I'll need two more a's. I'll multiply by a squared over a squared, so that'll give me a cubed. And then I've already got two b's, I've got a b squared, so let's multiply by b over b. That'll give me b cubed. So this is going to give me the cube root of 5 a squared b in the numerator, and I'll get the cube root of a cubed, which is just a, and the cube root of b cubed, which is just b. That's in the denominator, and I'm done. That's all I have to do. Alright, uh, this next example uh, let's go ahead and, and notice here that I have an, a 3 a to the fourth. Now a to the fourth it has a perfect cubed in it, right? That's a cubed times a. I don't have any perfect cubes in the denominator, uh, so let's let's go ahead and, and just deal with the denominator first. I'll multiply here by the cube root. I have 7 to the first power. There's no factors in 7. Uh, so multiply by 7 squared, the cube root of 7 squared, that'll give me the cube root of 7 cubed, 
And I'll need a b in here as well to get rid of the uh, cube root of b squared. I'll combine it with another cube root of b, and that'll make the cube root of b cubed. Whatever I do in the denominator, do the same thing in the numerator. And that'll keep everything equal. All right? So this is going to give me, in the numerator, I'm going to get the cube root. I've got an, I'm going to go ahead and write this a to the fourth as a cubed over here. And I'll just put the extra a over here just to kind of keep track of it so I don't forget about it. And then I've got the 7 squared. Um, and I have the 3. So let's go ahead and put the 3 and the 49. That would be 7 squared. And then I have a b. So I don't think there's going to be any more perfect squares in that. In the denominator, I'll have the cube root of 7 cubed b cubed. So I'm going to get in the numerator. I can bring the cube root of a cubed out. That's just a. And then I'll be left with the cube root of 3 times 49. So that's going to give me, what is that, 27 carry the 247. And I know there's no perfect cubes in 147 because I can see the factors up here, right? It was 3 times 7 squared where I got that from. And, and so there's no more perfect square factors. I have an a and a b left over under that radical. And then denominator, the cube root of 7 cubed is 7. Cube root of b cubed is just b.